What's going on, fam? It's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, Lucky Murray. And I'm back with another exclusive interview today on CHH Now. I'm talking to my man, L-O-N, and he just dropped a record called Broken Narratives, man. Probably yeah. one of the best CHH albums I've heard. You know, independent artists, just, just everything, man, was put together, man. So, L-O-N, how you doing today, my brother? Man, I'm great, bro. I'm excited, so I'm super hyped right now. Hey, the first thing is, uh, a lot of people want to ask, how did you get the name L-O-N? Where, where did that come from? Uh, it's just really a phonetic spelling of my real name. My real name is Lon, which is spelled the letter L, the letter O, the letter N. So the rap name is spelled E-L-O-H-I-N. So when you break it down in three syllables, you got the L, the E-L, the O for the O-H, and then I-N is N. So when you break it down, it's L-O-N. Just kind of got creative with the real name, so. Hey, you know, most people, they, they make these rap names that are super uh, trendy or somebody else has it, uh, but L-O-N is something unique, man. This is pretty dope, brother. Uh, so we, yeah. we were talking to Ain't you. Ain't nobody got that name. No, no. Nah. people can't even pronounce it, man. I got to send <laughs> audio clips with everything. Like, how do you, how you say it? Like, what? <laughs> I'm glad you did because a lot of people, if they have like really hard to say names, they don't they don't yeah. give you anything with it. They think you're supposed to say it, and then when you butcher right. it on live or on a radio interview or whatever, then they look at you all salty, man. But Elwin, I'm glad that you right. uh, uh, do that to people, and I'm also glad that you put out this record, man. So uh, before we talk about Broken Narratives, which is out today on all streaming platforms, can you talk a little about how did you get to the road to Broken Narratives? Yeah, so it's really funny how it happened. Um, So once I put out my second album, which was R2.0, Let's Continue, that came out in 2017. Um, You know, I had like the the single that most people know from that is uh, Lost in You, which is kind of like a pop love type song or whatever um, that actually did fairly decent. Um, Not so much in the CHH circle, but just in overall, it did fairly decent. Um, and after that, I started working on, um, and at the time it wasn't even broken narrative. I didn't even have a title, um, for the project yet. Um, and it's crazy because literally in the, in the middle of me working on the, you know, the third album, like God kind of just dropped it on my spirit, uh, to work on a mixtape, like just literally in the middle of it. I'm like, what is going on? You know? So, um, I got really inspired and I wrote, uh, I did a, uh, 12 songs, actually it's 16 songs, but it's two different versions. Um, but a, a mixtape called Boom Bap Soul, which came out January of 2019. Um, so literally I was like right in the middle of this and did that. So once that dropped, then I kind of picked back up um, with this album and I had I had a much more clear vision of where I wanted to go, how I wanted it to, you know, play out. Um, and then I came up with the, you know, the album title Broken Narrative. Um, so that's kind of how I got there, man. And really, it's it was about, I guess you could say, closure. Um, me just really um, digging deep into some things in my past that I've dealt with that, you know, I never really talked about on record. Um, some things that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in, you know, counseling, talking about, and, it, and it's just very, it's very therapeutic to get it out on song as well. So a lot of that stuff is, is kind of addressing some of those issues. So. Yeah, it's it's a real therapeutic, you know, uh, definitely for myself and hopefully everybody else that hears it. Yeah, and, and the one thing that I, I realized with the album uh, after doing the album review that this album is very vulnerable and is very transparent. Uh, was that something yeah. that, and, and I know that uh, in your press release and you talked about this is probably the most transparent that you've ever been in your life, in your career, as far as your records. Was this something yeah. that you planned to do throughout the album writing process or or was it something as you was creating, it kind of came out of, came out in the records? Yeah, I, I think it was more as I was creating because I looked at like some of the songs that I started writing were were more personal. And I realized, like, I never, like, I haven't put a record like that out. Like, I, I, I'm always, like, open and, and, like, transparent in my songs in general. But, like, I, I feel like I took it a level deeper on here than, than I had in the past. So uh, it, was, it was more of something as I was writing. I was like, man, this is, this, this is getting deeper. Let's, let's go there. You know, let's go there. So I just started digging deeper. And, like, this, this is going to be that type of record. Like, I need to get this out. 
and you know you the, the the fact also is the fact that you just you had a clear vision on broken narratives yeah. when you wrote it and then when you executed it uh talk talk I, I want you to talk about this that you didn't really go to the trendy box a lot of people when they do when they make records especially independent artists they feel like they have to go to the trendy box in order to catch a buzz uh, was it hard yeah. for you to fight against the grain to stay true to who you are as an artist at times it is yeah because um you're always tempted to do what's hot you know what's trendy like i can easily make make a pop record and and throw it out there and then do good like i i don't have any question about that but it's and there and those records are fun to do don't get me wrong but it's just like where I'm at, am as an artist right now, like it's just not, it's not what I'm trying to do. Um, Cause I feel so many people are doing it that it really doesn't stand out much. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to take a road where, and, and it's a hard balance sometimes. Like uh, how do you do a, a, a peer, you know, hip hop record, but yet maintain that commercial appeal to a degree where people can still vibe with you and still, you know, like, and, and it's a, it's a, it's a hard line to ride sometimes, but like, I feel like that I'm able to do it. Um, I, like I experimented with it on, on the, on the mixtape, you know, the boom bap soul, which was completely all throwback like nineties for the most part, early two thousands. Like the whole thing was like that. That was the whole aim, the whole goal, all that. This is a little different. Um, it is it has more of a it's not so much 90s but it does have that hip hop you know that raw hip hop feel to it um you can hear the elements in there you know but it it's, it's definitely different from the mixtape you know when i did it um but yeah man it's it's sometimes it's a challenge you know but i i stay true to true to myself as an artist um and i know when when i'm writing my best and making my best music is when i when i'm in that lane so i was like yeah and then, and then it, Detroit, Michigan, uh, that's yeah. where you're from. Uh, they're, they're legendary rappers, such as Eminem, of course, uh, but it's a, a very right. gritty hip hop sound. It's different from any other sound in the country. Uh, could you talk about the influences from being from Detroit and how that reflects in your music? Yeah, so our our scene is so crazy here because I mean even even if you go pre hip hop like I mean the whole Motown era man, you know like was like here you know and and, and it revolutionized music, um, and then you know once hip hop came on like we didn't we never really got the love like that, um, I mean we had we had Slum Village we had um, you know with with Dilla and everything um, that that was out, but we didn't get the the major major um love like that until Eminem came on. When Eminem came on, everybody was like, whoa, okay. So then you got, you know, you got dudes coming coming out the woodwork, man, like getting signed and everything from Big Sean to Rush to Five Nine to, you know what I mean? Just just so many artists that that that's come out of Detroit that's that's doing their thing. So for me, it was like I I I grew up listening to like more lyrical hip hop. Um, so that's always been kind of embedded in me and ingrained in me. So, so when I, when I started writing music, I was on that same path of like, I'm going to try to be as lyrical as I possibly, possibly can be and still be myself, you know? So coming out of Detroit, like with, with, with the bar set that high, it's like, yo, you gotta, you know, you got, you got to do it. And again, everybody don't do that. You know, it, we got a lot of different styles here. You know, some people don't take the lyrical route. Some people just, you know they take more of the trendy route, some people more street, like whatever it may be. But for me, that, that was like my thing. I, like, I want to go a little bit more, I ain't the most, most lyrical, but like that influences me a lot. So I think about that stuff when I write. And, and you know, with, with, like I said, I think that you had a, you had a, you paint, you paint pictures. Uh, that's one yeah. thing I want to ask you when you, when you rap. I, I like I said, I, I believe that you're a wordsmith when it comes to your words as far as mm -hmm. the way you put words together to paint a picture. It's almost like a visual album. Uh, yeah. Were you always that type of artist to kind of write vividly, or did you have to develop that over time? Uh, let's see. It, I would say I, I, I probably was, initially wasn't like that. It was more punchlines, metaphors, punchlines, metaphors, you know, just, just always that. 
and then I would have my songs like, and this is all my, you know, my BC days, you know. Um, I would have my songs like talking to the girls and then my club joints and all that. But, you know, once I got on fire for the Lord and, you know, became a Christian, all that shifted. Um, so once I got in, once I got on this side in, in the CHH world, it was more focused on the message. Um, I definitely still was painting a picture though. Like I, I kind of honed in on the storytelling, which I feel is like has become kind of a lost art um, in hip hop. Like somebody can, if you can tell a story, like that is so, so fire to me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. for real, for real. Like that, that is, that is so fire because it's like, I don't even need to see a music video. If you can tell the story so well, I can create my own music video of the song in my head because I'm following you along as you're talking about it. So my, my imagination is starting to pick up and, and, and take over. Uh, and I, I keep that in mind when I write, like I, I tell, I tell stories even when I'm not trying to tell a story. I realize that. And it's like, it, it, it comes out very clear. So people understand what I'm talking about and they understand where I'm trying to go with it because I, I, I focus in and I hone in on that part, that part of the craft. And and it shows in this album. And the one the one thing I noticed is that uh this this story to me seemed like it was a story of an underdog who had to who had to overcome obstacles in order to get to where he's at right now. Um yeah. you know, um, uh, you know, there were songs like Mama Told Me. Um it was also a song, I can't think of the name of that, but you was talking to your sons and that uh, you, words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. And then yeah. I, I related to that so much because you, you said in a line. That, that, that just stuck with me that, you know, I'm so saying you're trying to teach them, you know, what you didn't learn because you met your dad at 28. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so with, with intimate things like that, were you like, after you wrote it, put it out like, ah, oh, man, I shouldn't do this. Or was it therapeutic to you? Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, these, you, you have some really, really deep songs. Yeah. A lot of it is, was very therapeutic. Like I, I think I, um, at some point in time, I don't know if it was this year or last year, I had tweeted out, I was like, man, you know you're writing something deep when you got to, like, check with the people that's involved <laughs> and make sure they're cool with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you ain't trying to put nobody business out there like that, you know what I mean? Like, you just yeah. got to, like, you got to make sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So it was, one, it was one of those type of records, man. But a lot of it was real therapeutic. Um, it was, it was just, you know, getting things off my chest and being able to tell my story in, you know, in a way that I, I was never, that I never told it before. Um, like I said, talking about stuff that I never really addressed on record. Um, and, and for me, it, it was, you know, it was, it was some deep moments, man, writing some of that stuff, man. Like, you know, it was moments of tears. It was moments of anger, moments of, you know, just a lot of different moments and, and different emotions that I felt. Uh, going through it, so so the words of wisdom, it was crazy because um, when I when I when I did the song, I brought it home, and I let I let both of my sons hear, it. and they were at the song. I, I think I recorded it actually a couple years ago, um, and I let them I let them hear. It. So they were younger. My so my youngest at the time was just kind of like whatever, you know. I think he was like four at the time, um, but my oldest, uh, when I let him hear it. He literally, he listened to it all the way through. And then he was like, all right, play it again. Wow. So I played it again. And he was like, all right, stop it. What does that mean? Mm. And I was like, all right, let's talk. So it was like literally line for line. We went through the whole song. Wow. And I was explaining what I meant and what I was talking about, you know. And, and the cool thing is, like, it's one of them songs that you can pull out any time and go back into it and get deeper as he gets older, as they get older. Yeah. I can go deeper into it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, L.O.N., talk about the favorite, one of your favorites on the record, on Broken Narratives. Favorite, man. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to be like, be like the cliche artist, like, all of them, bro. Yeah. <laughs> all of them are my favorite, like, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would say uh, definitely Words of Wisdom is, is, you know, is one of my favorites, which, you know, we, we just talked about. Um, and another one, I actually, I got a couple. Uh, one is um, Moving On which I'm probably going to put out as like the next single, yeah, uh, which, which is, which is kind of just, is, is, is looking at the past and walking away. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just literally everything that I went through, a lot of the struggles I had is like just turning around and walking away from it. Like I'm moving on, I'm moving into something new. 
I'm moving into what God has for me, like from relationships to, you know, uh, just personal struggles. And you know, I bring up pornography on there. I talk about gang banging on there, like just all type of stuff, you know, the streets. And it's just walking away from all that and going to what God has for me. So that's definitely one of my favorites, man. Um, and then I will say the, the title track, Broken Narrative. The last track. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah. Great narrative. That, that's, that's it, man. Because it, you know, especially that second verse, because the whole second verse is about how I met my pops. Oh. You know what I mean? And, and, and how, how we were able to, you know, finally, you know, meet each other and sit down and have, have a three hour long conversation. That's literally. So. You know, man, that's crazy, man. Like I said before, this is one of those albums, and I said in the review that you can't just listen to one time and be nah. like, well, I got it. Like, you got to dissect and keep going. I literally, before I even put the, put the album review out, I listened to this album like maybe five, six, seven times through. Uh, yeah each song and I was like man that's still stuff I'm missing uh so the, the last question I want to ask uh, before you know we wrap the interview up is the features the singing features uh I noticed two things one you didn't feature any artists nah other than singers right and I'm like oh that's a that's a J. Cole move <laughs> you know yeah. So, yeah, man. so talk a little bit about your selection of the singers which I thought was amazing and also the the decision not to feature anybody else on the record but feature singers. Yeah. So when I was putting it together, um, I actually do have some songs with features, but they didn't make the cut. Oh. You know, when I when I when I finally <laughs> no, not it's not the features that make the cut, but those song those songs that make the cut because it just didn't it didn't feel right. Gotcha. It didn't, it didn't it didn't fit the, you know, the whole vibe of the album. So I was like, man, I don't I just don't, I don't want no features on here. I was like, it's too personal. Oh. Like to have another rapper featured on here. Like I may, I may do it for a remix or something, but yeah. like the actual songs, I was like, it's, it's too personal. So I couldn't, I, I feel like I didn't need nobody else on there just because I'm telling the story so vividly. I feel like, yo, I can handle this all myself from, a, from the rapper standpoint. The singing, I mean, I'm not a singer, so <laughs> you know, yeah. you gotta, I had to connect with some, with some, some features for singing and, um, you know, everybody I work with, man, um, like Reg Reggie Williams, and he's on the song, um, I'm Trying. You know, he, uh, me and him worked together before. Uh, dude has a phenomenal voice. He's actually a comedian, which is, which is uh, funny. funny. He's a comedian, yeah. <laughs> um, but you wouldn't think so the way he sings, man, because he yeah. kills it. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, he was, he was on, my, um, on my second album. Mm. Um, we, we did a song called Miss America. And so I, had a, I hit him up like, yo, bro, I want you on this song with me. Um, and I got my my homie Dean to play the uh, to play the keys on it, um, so that's that joint. And then moving on, I got Amber Ramsey. Man, Amber is only like what twenty? Wow, nineteen twenty years old. Yeah, and um, so I, I do a lot of I do a lot of work with um, with teens and working with students, um, and that's actually how I met her um, when she was a teen. Like she was in this thing um, um, called Fine Arts. Oh. And um, I was one of the evaluators, man. And um, so we, we just connected after that. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm going to put you on a record eventually. So we actually did two records together. Um, but one, didn't, it didn't uh, make the album. But that one definitely, definitely got on the album. So that was, that was dope, man. And then Coco Butterfly. Yeah, she, um, she's like a funk soul singer, man. Just mm. powerful vocals. So when we connected, it was like, it was it was a great conversation in the studio, like really, really sweet personality, man. And it, it we just clicked, you know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I like I said, man, I think this is a great album, uh, Broken Narratives by L O N. Uh it's a must listen. You gotta add it to your playlist collection. You don't even have to add it to a playlist. Or you do add the songs to playlist to help them out. But right. just listen to it, man. Uh L O N man, tell people where they can find the album, tell people where they can find you at. Just 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 blast yeah. all your socials. Definitely, man. So uh, the website, notyouraveragerapper.com, can't forget that. That's super easy to remember. Um, the other web website is changefactorent.com. So that's like the uh, entity that's over everything where I'm not only putting on my own music, but I'm helping other artists. Come on now. Get their stuff out. Yeah, come, man. Come on I'm, now. I'm, I'm trying to do something, man. You know, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't big, but the little bit I do know and the little resources I do have, I'm trying to like, Hey, people. no, the, the, the crazy thing is that I don't, I don't like when people say that is because you're doing something a lot of people in the com community say that people aren't doing, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. investing in other artists. Um, and 
God sees it and God is rewarding you. You see what I'm saying? So don't yeah. ever look at anything as, hey, man, you're doing a huge thing because these yeah. artists right here wouldn't even have a platform if it wasn't for you. So, hey, man, salute, brother. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely, man. That's awesome. And, um, far, as far as like the other socials, um, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that's um, just L-O-N-0-7. So E-L-O-H-I-N-0-7. And then Facebook is um, L-O-N fan page. Uh, so that's how you can you can find me, man, definitely. And I got I to gotta give a shout out, man. I got to give a shout out um, to Spec House, man. I can't even I can't even talk about this unless I give a shout out to Spec House. All the producers that worked on it, they killed it. But shout out to Spec House because he literally took like a, a a project that was good and made it great. You know what, you know what I'm I, saying? Like, <laughs> and I forgot to even talk about Spec House. I I, I you know let, let's 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 get him some dudes man before we wrap up this interview, man. Talk yeah. a little bit about you know Spec House and how y'all connected there, man. Uh, just just talk about because he's has done some powerful things in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So talk a little bit about Spec House and y'all relationship. Yeah, man. He he is super cool, super down to earth dude, man. Like real, um, real encouraging, like through the whole project. Very, very encouraging. Like really getting my input on, on what I like, what I didn't like. You know, if I if I had if he did something I didn't like, I could say, hey, like switch this around and he was, you know, cool with it. And then he gave me a lot of suggestions. I'm like, yo, run with it, bro. Like that's a, that yeah. that's dope. You know, but but I ran it. I I actually met him because um I was hearing a lot of his work, but I didn't know who was doing it because he kind of like more behind the scenes with with a lot of the stuff he does. But I I listened to uh the, the Flame album, mm. uh God knows, and then I listened when I back when when the truth dropped. Uh, that's what really got me when he dropped um, it's complicated. Mm. And I'm like, yo, I was like, and I never pay attention to this stuff, but I was like, who did the mixing and mastering on this joint? Mm. I was like, this is like fire, man. Like, wow. and so I had, I, I, I found out who it was and I hit him up like, bro, I got an album coming out and I want you to, to do all my post-production, all my mixing, all my mastering, you know, additional production, all that, you know, let, let, let's work. And he was like, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's do it. So we started, we started working, man. And yeah. The rest, the rest is history. So hey, it sounds pretty good, man. Broken narratives out the day, man. Go stream it. Go run those numbers up. L O N, man. Yeah. Uh, and C F Entertainment. So uh, uh, stay tuned to chhnow.com for your latest and greatest Christian pop news and, and anything L O N drop, man. We'll be first to report it, man. So thank you, L O N, for the interview, man. Salutes to you, brother. Um, Definitely, man. Again, it's the entertainer, the motivator, the educator, Lucky Murray, with another exclusive interview with my man L O N. He dropped this new record, uh, Broken Narratives. Go stream it today. It will be in the link in the description below. Uh, but uh, we'll see y'all next time, people.